When I created Some Boy Online back in 2020, it was mostly due to having a lot of time on my hands as the country was in lockdown, but it also crossed my mind that if everything were to end horribly with this pandemic, would I have achieved everything that I wanted? And from that, me being me, came to the conclusion that I needed a real Kermit. What became of that conclusion? I couldn't possibly say. What I ultimately learned from this is that you can have the most accurate Kermit puppet possible, but what truly makes him Kermit is the puppeteer. He is the most wonderful display piece, but I am a complete novice when it comes to this Henson style of puppetry. That's why I'm overjoyed to have a copy of Puppetry 101, creating film and television style puppetry by Adam Krudinger. This book is ideal for beginners such as myself uh, and professionals alike. You know, from idea to show, Adam goes into detail about different styles of puppets, script writing and performing on camera to create your very own television style puppet show. Sorry, mate, am I being insensitive here? It's the perfect companion for the Puppet Nerd YouTube channel, and you can find links to both down below. But now, to address the, uh, frog in the room. When the film The Muppets came out over a decade ago, my ten-year-old self was determined to get a real Kermit, which led me to the Build-A-Bear version that you could puppeteer. I enjoyed this, but couldn't help being distracted by the toy's chunky design. So I ended up with a Kermit plush from the Disney store, which to me at the time was as close as you could get to the real thing, minus the fact he couldn't be puppeteered. I loved these toys as a kid, but it niggled away at me that you couldn't just buy a normal looking Kermit puppet. Surely every kid would have wanted one, but as I go on to learn many years later, this was exactly why Disney never produced such an item. Fast forward to 2020 and suddenly I'm hit with this regret that I never did fulfil my childhood dream of getting a Kermit puppet. It was time to use what I didn't have then, the ability to research, a bit of patience and more than £12 in savings, to make this dream a reality. I mentioned patience as I didn't want to hastily jump onto eBay and buy the closest thing I could find. I needed to slip into the online puppetry community and simply observe as much as possible. Find out what differentiates a good Kermit from a bad one and which individuals are the most knowledgeable on the subject. It's at this point I actually came across Adam's channel and it was abundantly clear that these puppet people were some of the most kind, helpful and easy going out there. So what's the first thing I did? Dropped into a Discord server and said, hey, does anyone know where I can buy a Kermit replica? The reaction was stone cold, you know, a stark contrast to my previous encounters, as if I'd just committed a heinous crime. As it transpired, this would indeed lead me down a path to what was essentially the criminal underworld of puppet building. Allow me to explain. As we know, Kermit is owned by Disney. Disney does not want fans to have access to puppet replicas of Kermit because it compromises the value of that character. So naturally, he's protected by copyright. If anyone attempts to reproduce Kermit, that's technically illegal. It's why Master Replicas paid Disney a hefty fee for the licensing of their Kermit replica, which is about the most accurate official product available and still isn't even a puppet. A guy named Gordon on the Muppet Central forum sums it up with, Disney's not going to stop you from making your own Kermit. Just don't be stupid and try to make 200 of them to sell on eBay or post nasty videos featuring him on YouTube. That's ringing some bells already. So. What exactly is allowing all of this online Kermit content, good and bad, to exist despite this? Basically, fair use. That infamously vague copyright law that on the one hand allows creators to show off their puppets and impersonations of their favourite character, but on the other hand allows the likes of Are You Super Serial to completely exploit that character for years, whilst reaping the rewards without consequence. So where were we? Oh yeah, illegal Muppet trafficking. A quick search of Kermit puppets on eBay will bring up a string of Chinese knockoffs, 
some even including pictures of the real Kermit to mislead buyers, as what you'll actually get is Kermit from Wish. This sort of thing is wrong, but extremely common with any intellectual property. The Muppet trafficking I'm referring to is when puppet builders turn to the dark side and start mass producing pretty decent replicas, but then sell them at extortionate prices. I noticed these would often pop up and then quickly disappear from eBay, as the site itself doesn't want to be responsible for these kinds of transactions taking place. Taking a look at recently sold Kermits, you can see what I mean with the shocking prices. Whilst most of these don't even resemble the real Kermit, but they do look identical to the puppet IU Super Serial uses. Now, what does that tell you? Kids don't want to imitate Kermit, they want to imitate him. At the time, I did hesitantly converse with some of these sellers, but the gist was that they'd run out of Antron fleece, the special fabric used to make the actual Muppets. This resulted in some weird looking Kermits being produced using experimental material for the same hefty prices, and it soon became clear that this wasn't the way to go. I then resorted to finding images of the best looking Kermit replicas online and seeing if I could trace them back to their creators. It seemed any Kermit that looked spot on always led back to a user named ECL on the replica prop forum. He'd made a select few to perfect one for himself, but certainly wasn't going to be producing more to sell. So I corresponded with other puppet builders, and one in particular agreed to carry out the deed. Although he was also struggling to find the correct materials, he did help with many of my queries regarding stuff like fabric colours, arm rods, and how to spot the Henson stitch. Even so, I thought it would be foolish to jump the gun now, so decided to buy my time until the correct material would surely come. It's a good job I held back as whilst all this was going on, I happened to check eBay one day and in this bizarre twist of fate, there it was. A real Kermit. It was expensive, but still not as much as the black market Kermits and more to the point, it was perfect. I immediately sent an image to my puppet building contact who described it as very clean looking and casually finished it with ECL made it. I was like, ECL? Where do I? Oh my god, this was made by the most renowned puppet builder of Kermits on the internet. Although luckily for me, the actual seller was a guy in England who'd already had the puppet imported from the US. I quickly inquired as to whether this was indeed a full-bodied puppet, as the pictures weren't clear. The seller not only confirmed this, but also dropped that arm rods were included. Needless to say, I couldn't have been presented with a better opportunity, and just had to have this Kermit before anyone else snatched him up. So in early December of 2020, eight months after my search began, a very long cardboard box marked Special Delivery arrived. It was indeed the most special of deliveries. Opening the box and having just the real Kermit peering out was the most surreal thing. So after unboxing and just staring at him from every angle, my first instinct was to stick my hand up his, uh, I mean, puppeteer him. It's here I was met with some stuffing and a wedge of foam carved into the shape of Kermit's head, as otherwise he has no bone structure. This is only in place for display purposes, so it has to be removed in order to perform him, and you end up with It's times like this I just admire the Kermit's performers are able to keep their hand in such a position for extensive periods of time, as if you lose that posture, Kermit just looks wrong. And um, you know, that's before even thinking about the more intricate expressions, which I certainly haven't. My brother was watching the whole time as he was sort of in on the whole Operation Kermit thing. So once I got a good feel of it, uh, we thought we'd surprise our sister by having Kermit the Frog peer around the door. Instead, she just momentarily glanced up from TikTok and said, Hi Kermit, in the most casual tone I've ever heard. At this point I broke character and was like, Bruh, this is an actual Kermit, is that not the slightest bit interesting? But she replied, you've had it years. And at this point it hit me that she thought this was the Disney Store plush. Anyway, I felt like Al from Al's Toy Barn as I re-stuffed Kermit and sealed him into a glass cabinet to admire. 
as I couldn't bear the thought of anything happening to him. Now, I wanted to investigate ECL's Kermit's further to verify that this was indeed his origin, and in doing so, discovered that the puppet builder used to work for the Jim Henson Company, which is interesting. He goes on to detail his later puppets having rubber mouth plates and black arm rods with wooden ends, which is a perfect match to what we've got here. I just kept scrolling through his build diary showing the construction of what is potentially this very Kermit, and it's just mesmerizingly precise and intricate. I believe all in all that six Kermits were made by the time he was satisfied with the final product. Looking at this handy image in which ECL numbers each of his builds, we can see that one, two and three look a bit off with larger eyes. He still has six, so it's a toss up between four and five as to which is mine. I've got no proof of this, but I've got a gut feeling it's five, going off the details given and the face, he just sort of looks familiar. Which if true, makes this the most refined version of Kermit, bar his one subsequent build. Taking a closer look at him, the Antron fleece is just lovely, and so soft. I mean, the colour is perfect, though it looks different under very enlightened. The colour on the collar, I think, is great, and that in itself just looks sublime. I just love the full size of him, like being much taller than Kermit plushes, whilst still looking small uh, relative to other Muppets and humans. Plus, not all puppets are full-bodied with legs, so that's just another cherry on the cake. The eyes seem like the perfect size, and you've got the, the felt pupils and everything, and you can see from the plans that ECL shared just how much work went into creating the correct head shape here. So, the arm rods come separately and slot into Kermit's wrists, uh, then you use your other hand to control both of them, which I really need to work on, as it's incredibly difficult, and they tend to just sort of pop out like that. In addition to that, the fingers all have wires that run through them, and that allows you to bend the fingers into, you know, any position. And you'd usually do this before the actual puppeteer, and I imagine if you wanted them to hold a small object, you could do something like that. So that brings us to the present, and I'm honestly left wanting to improve on the puppetry and make some stuff with them, but at the same time, I'm hesitant given all the stuff mentioned earlier. I suppose I'm in a legal grey area, as I didn't make the Kermit, and nor did I sell him, I just sort of happened to have him, and therefore any use of him should fall under parody like every other Kermit video on the internet. God, when I dreamt of having a real Kermit as a kid, legal issues were unsurprisingly not something I accounted for. Regardless, I hope you all enjoyed my journey to find the perfect Kermit replica. I honestly couldn't be happier with them, and you know, I just feel so lucky that things panned out the way they did. And if any members of the puppetry community are watching and have any further insight on this whole fiasco, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks for watching.